Awo Shalom. Salam Tana, Kena Yisterling, and a Melkam Lidet Adarasacho, or as others would say, Melkam Genna. Now, in the last couple of videos, we've been touching on the Genna mystery, or what we call the Genna mystery, because we understand what this Ethiopic um, um, description or naming for the Ethiopian, quote, Christmas, or the birth of Christ, the birth of the Mashi, Jesus, really means we begin to see the fuller picture, the bigger picture. So if you haven't seen the other portions of this series, please check it out, because we're going to seek to build up a little bit more in this presentation. Now, because this is the 7th of January, 2012, and we're in the 12th uh, Torah portion reading and feeding in this particular cycle, we see a conjunction. There's a conjunction between the Ethiopian Christmas, this particular year, or Lidet, Gena, Malet, and with the particular Sabbath. And this year, very interestingly enough, Jesus Christos, the memorial for his birth, also occurred on the Sabbath day. Now, there's a couple of things we want to touch on in this, and we're just going to follow the Holy Spirit in going through this. First of all, we put up uh, the one of the oldest icons of the Black Madonna and Jesus Christos, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Black Madonna and the Black Christ, or the true Christ and the true Mother of God, or the the Theotokos, or the, the God-bearer, as ones would say. Now, there's a whole big debate and reasoning about that, but we accept the truth of that when we comprehend exactly what is what, and it is what it is. So let's get into this right now. Christ, hallelujah, Christ, the Moshiach, has been born, and this is a memorial of his birth. But the question is, have you been born again? Christos, or Jesus, Yehoshua, has been born. But the point is our regeneration. The point is our rebirth. In order that this does not become, as it has in the world, a materialistic thing, a vain thing, a forgetful thing, so that it can have practical and real application in our own lives, we need to focus on our new birth. And this particular teaching for this particular Shabbat is going to discuss that connection right there. This is what we hope and we pray we're able to discuss. Christ, the Moshiach, Yeshua, Jesus Christos has been born. Hallelujah. But have we been born again? And what is the process there's a process, and we only learn of this from the scriptures and through the guidance and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But the first step is to repent. The first step is to have a metanoia. The first step is to have a change of mind, or to put it in more practical terms, to think different. Think differently. Steve Jobs may... God bless his soul, he had it right with think differently. Because think differently actually is an accurate translation of the word repent. Imagine if ones were able to understand it like that. Think differently. In other words, stop thinking in this secular or worldly or God-forsaken way and start to think in his way in Jah's way, in Yah's way. So let's discuss this right here. There's a scripture that we recall and that comes to mind. And this particular scripture, I think, is connected with, um, if I'm correct, Galatians, in the book of Galatians. Let's go to Galatians for a moment, and we'll give you the actual, the exact uh, verse. And... Um, is speaking about how the law, which is Torah, 
is our schoolmaster. And here it is right here. The law is our schoolmaster. Uh, the true intent of the law or the Torah is condemnation. And as a preparatory discipline. So ones would ask us, well, why are we reading and studying and, and dealing with Torah and dealing with the Old Testament and the five books of Moses? Because we're seeking to faithfully follow Jesus Christos, seek to faithfully follow him in becoming Christ-like or Moshiach-like, or in other words, to becoming and being and manifesting the true spirit and the nature and the operation of true Christian, as opposed to what we witness in the world, the so-called Antichrist. Here it says in Galatians chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 19, it says, um, Wherefore then serveth the law? So let's make this a little bit clearer for ones and ones. Let's go to the whiteboard and the dry erase board and let us put this up here. So Christ has been born. Hallelujah. Christ has been born. But have we been born again? Mm -hmm. Or, I know people don't like to think about this, have ones actually perhaps aborted their new birth or are in the process of aborting their new birth? Or has there been a complication in their birth, spiritual birth? We're comparing earthly things or worldly things or things that you should know with that which you seek and with the spiritual things. So just as there can be complications in the physical birth, there can also be complications in a spiritual birth. Could many say that, yes, I accept the Lord, and many have been going to church and been been Christian for years or churching for years, but still they have not grown up. They have not matured. And therefore, since they have not matured, they're not able to translate Christ's life to their own life and to affect the atmosphere around them. And therefore, we see the world in the present situation. And there is a judgment coming. There is a judgment coming. Know this for sure. But while we have time, let us redeem the time because the days are evil. So January 7th, January 7th, right? January 7th equals what we know as Lidet, but it's also called Gena. Now, Lidet means birth, and it's referring to the birth of Yeshua, who is known and who's called Christos, but before that, the Moshiach, the Moshi. If you go to John chapter 1, verse 41, you'll find that they first found the Messiah, which is a Greek way of saying Messiah. So, really, they didn't have to say Christos or Christ, but they sought to explain that to other speakers who were not Hebraically orientated. But it's clear that the first century followers of Yeshua, of Yehoshua, of Getach, and our black Lord and Savior, were Hebrews, or what we would call Jews, but more rightly, black Jews. So, Lidet Genna, Lidet Genna, and this is the birth, right, of E. Yeh-su-seh, who is also known as Yeshua, Yeshua. The long form is Yehoshua. Some say there's no hole there because of English and and what it means in English, but that's lost in translation. Remember, we're going back to the foundation, which is before the so-called English. So Christ has been born. But what about our new birth? What effect or what resonance is this on our new birth? Now, the new birth is known Christologically by many other descriptors. 
the new birth is also known as regeneration. Now we use up some of the space right here, so we don't have the ability to write it down right here, but just take notes of this. It's known as regeneration, um, known as being born again. We have born again, which is like a second birth or the spiritual birth. Also, it's known as the new birth. And it comes under the doctrinal or the teaching theme of adoption. Adoption. So the adoption is connected. We have the new birth, born again, born again from above, spiritually, as we were born firstly from below, from our mother's womb, now to be born again from above, because the seed of the new birth is the word. This is why we must study to show ourselves approved. We must study the scripture. And just because one doesn't get it all at one time, still it's like, I like to compare it to like a bank account, a spiritual, a divine bank account. The more you invest in it, the more you have the opportunity through interest to withdraw from it. But if you don't invest anything in it, if you don't study to show yourself approved, the Holy Spirit cannot guide you properly because you do not have the basic foundation. You know what I'm saying? You lack that basic foundation. Now, some people say, well, I know some good people, so forth and so on, and they don't read the Bible, and they're not a Christian, so forth and so on. But good, according to whose standard? You see, you can judge by your own standard, but you cannot even save yourself. See, the world is telling you you can save yourself. They're telling you to save the earth. But it's necessary that we, ourselves, be saved and be saved spiritually. And there's only one Savior. I know a lot of folks, this, this new age thing, a lot of people will be like, well, there's, there's all these messiahs, so forth and so on. Let's get that clear. And we've touched on this before about what Christ means and where Christ is derived from and what is the interpretation or a, a, a translation, interpolation of Messiah. There were other messiahs. That is true. But that a special messiah, that a special son of God, that on the alleged, that only begotten, is our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. And for us as Rastafari, it becomes extremely important, vital, fundamental that we comprehend this in the context of the teaching of his imperial majesty because many Rastafari might have ignored that particular point because of all the whitewashing and all that they have been through and our ancestors with white supremacy, but now it behooves ourselves to make our wills obedient to good influences and to learn the teachings of his imperial majesty, which is the testimony, begins with the testimony of his Christ, the testimony of his son, of Getachina Medhanetachin Iesus Christo. So Christ has been born nearly 2,000 years ago, they tell us. But have we been born again? That is the key. So here in Galatians chapter 3, Verse 19, it says, Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise or the expectation was made. And it was ordained by angels, by Melaikt, in the hand of a mediator. And this, this, this one sentence right here, we can do a whole lecture and teaching on this one sentence in order to understand the elements that are coming together. Because if you, if you don't comprehend it from the true way, you're going to go astray. And much has been misunderstood because of the Gentile, white, Western world's misunderstanding racial, racially, all those other nasty and evil things. Because the seed that it speaks about here is the black seed. And we're giving you a demonstration right here, the black seed. And it says, until that what seed should come to whom the promise. You know, we ask ourselves, how come it didn't happen in the 60s? How come it didn't happen in the 70s? How come it didn't happen before? Because the seed has not come as of yet. 
Are we the seed? Are we those who have been born again? Are we those who have made our wills obedient to his good influence? Are we the instruments of his will? Or are we still resisting his will and resisting the invitation that is so full of compassion? This question each of us need to ask ourselves. Can we speak about unity? I and I need to unite. But first, one needs to unite or unite their heads and hearts, as Rastafari in particular, with the teaching of his imperial majesty. That's first and foremost for each individual or each I, so that I and I can come together, not in our will, but in his will. Then it will come to pass, and it's not far it's near, near. Now, a mediator, it says, is not a mediator of one, but God is one, but Jah is one. Egezi is one. Verse 21. Is the law, remember, law is Torah. Is the law then against the promises of Ha Elohim, Baruchu? God forbid. Ayadaris. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness, siddik or siddikinet, should have been by the law. So it's not the law or Torah that giveth life, but it's the Torah that becomes the instructions of life, both in this world and in the world to come. Verse 22, but the scripture, the metzhaf, but the scripture hath concluded all under chatia. The scriptures has concluded that all are under what English, according to English speakers, is called sin. Now, what is sin? Chatia, bamarinya, from chatia ata mean to miss, the missing of the mark. It's like aiming at a bullseye, but not hitting that center cipher, that center circle. You might get close, but you haven't hit that center. You haven't hit the bullseye. You've fallen short, or the arrow falling short of the target. And there's reasons for that. But still, the scripture has made a conclusion. The scripture, remember what his imperial majesty teaches us? Rastafari brothers and sisters. What does what the magic teach us? For my part, I glory in the Bible. So there's no ifs, ands, buts, or exceptions. But each one has a right to choose their own destiny. I, for, as for I and I, I and I and I and I house chooses to serve the King of Kings in and according to his Christ. Gitachin na medhanatachin Jesus Christos. But the scripture has concluded all under chatiyat, or sin, that the promise, the hope, the expectation, by faith, be'imnet, of Jesus Christos, might be given to them that, now your Bible says, believe. Now we've touched on be, lie, eve, so forth and so on, but we've broke it down, we've gotten into the very root of it, and we know that it's mamen. You understand? Mamen, as, as a verb. But that noun of mamen is the amen. And we understand the ancient link with the Amen. In ancient Egypt, they call the Amen the hidden one. And truly, this truth is hidden to many. You know what I'm saying? But it still is the faithful and the true. So it says, all them that admit is the overstanding of so-called belief, that admit as truth, that admit in this, in their heads and their hearts, that this is true. That's the overstanding of the word be lie Eve when we rightly orientate it and get to the very roots and get to our Ethiopic and our Hebraic roots. But before faith came, we were kept under law. Now, understand this. Before one is able to admit and has the, the subjective you understand? Of the objective. The objective is Christos. The objective is Christ-like, Moshiach-like. 
The objective is John Rastafari. But before one has that subjectively within them, the I as the subject or the ego, the ego as the subject, what does it say? But before faith came, we were kept. We were kept. We were protected under Torah, under the Torah or under law. Shut up to the faith, to the imnet, which should afterward be revealed. So when we speak about the revelation of Rastafari, the revelation of the King of Kings, this faith is being revealed. But if ones don't understand, you know, Gena Tasa you understand, if they still don't get this, you understand, why is this so? It's because they have not been kept, protected, you understand, under the instructions or Torah. They, they are empty. They lack this. And we see many examples, even in the Gospels, after our black Lord and Savior was crucified, after he died, and after his father resurrected him, and he resurrected, he appeared amongst them, and he had to teach them again that which be the first principles. He teach, taught them the law of Moses and the Psalms of David and, and the prophets because that is the scripture. So when you're in the New Testament and Christ is talking about haven't you read or in your law, or the scripture says, yes, he is speaking about Torah, the five books of Moses, therefore the weekly Torah portion readings and feedings are elemental, but they are fundamental. The Psalms of David, the Mesmura Dawit, as well as the Nabiyat, or according to the Hebrew, the Naveen, the Nabim, the prophets. This is what the scriptures are. You see a lot of so-called Christians and um, churchians, they believe that the New Testament is the scripture. But most of what they read in the New Testament, they cannot rightly divide the word of truth without the Old Testament. So Christ is quoting and referring to the Old Testament. So we're seeing how all of this comes together. And this is part of the discipleship. We're using this as an opportunity to build up the discipleship. Verse 24, it says, Wherefore the law, Torah, was our schoolmaster. The law, Torah, it was our schoolmaster. Literally, that word means um, mogzit. Mogzit is like a nanny. Mogzit is like a, a, a child conductor, what they call in the Greek a pedagogue. Amharic, mogzit. So the, the law was our nanny, our schoolmaster, like our mother in that sense, to bring us, to bring I and I and I to Christos to the Moshiach, to the Moshiach, to the both to the Messiah as person, but moreover to the Messiah or to Christos as a consciousness, as a mind state, that we might be justified by faith. Now, the King James Version of the Bible does this a whole lot. And I, I, I try to point this out, and I hope the brothers and sisters are paying attention to this, and then check this out for yourself and do your own search and study on this. For example, we spoke about the word holy, right? And sometimes we ask some of the brothers and sisters, what does holy mean? And we get sometimes different answers. I mean, uh, nice answers. I have to say it like that, brothers and sisters. Nice answers, but not accurate. Holy it does, it does that mean to be set apart, expansion, set apart to God or set apart for Jah, for the Almighty. That's what holy means. But if you look in your Bibles, King James especially, you find the word holy, sanctified, consecrated, um, hallowed. You have all these other words, but if you get into the Hebrew, if you get into the Ethiopic, the Ge'ez, or the Royal Amharic, or the Metaf, Kedus, or the Negus, and the Ges, guess what? you find the word kedase, kedus. You find one word, but in English they'll use different words. The same thing they do with the word righteous, righteousness. The word righteous and the word justified, just, just, righteous, justification, righteousness, making righteous, it's the same thing. It's the same key word, tzedekah, tzedekah, or tzedek as a person, or as an abstract. 
So with that overstanding, let us read this, this portion in Galatians chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 19. If you go through it, look where righteousness is made, is made mention. It's made mention in verse 21. Is the law, we clarify that, Torah or the Orit, then against the promises of God? He's asking a question because some would think, well, it seems like the Torah is, is opposite because the Torah brings a condemnation because failure to stay in the kept zone brings a judgment. So is that against the promises? Like we can say this as, as, as black people, as once lost but now found they to Israel. Was the Torah against the promises of God because God promised, promised us much things, but look at all the woe and the slavery and the persecution and everything that, that the lost sheep black folks are going through to this very day. And we find Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to verse 68, being a testimony to who are the true, the real Hebrews or Jews of the Scripture. So is, was that against the promises? What about the promised land? And what about a land flow of milk and honey and, and a promised land and we being the head and not the tail? What happened to Was Torah, Deuteronomy, chapter 15, t chapter 28, verse 15 to verse 68, was that against the promises of Ha Elohim? No, it wasn't. For if there had been a law, given, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Righteousness. You get that word right there? Righteousness. Now when we scroll forward to verse 24, it says, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. The law was like our nanny. You understand? It was like our, our, our um, child conductor. Because when you're born again, you're not born big. You see? We ask the question. We say, okay, January 7th is Lidet. Lidet means birth. Right? Lidet means birth. Dagmenya, you understand? And the new birth. Now we have Genna. Genna means not yet, it's still. Now we explain the connection with January 7th was not when, when Jesus Yeshua was born. Rather, it's when the annunciation of the Lik uh, Melaik uh, Gabriel, the angel Gabriel came and announced the bishrat that he gave to this Gilmarium concerning this great thing that was to happen to her and through her with the birth of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. Now, in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, this had been preserved, and the Eastern Oriental churches, this had been preserved around January Seventh and, and the Coptics a little a couple of days different so forth and so on. But when you now do the math and you and you and you and you face the facts of the matter, you get to recognize that from if this was the announcement January seventh, and it takes a baby about nine or so months. If you count nine months forward, when do we have? We have a disarmament. Adisamet, the Ethiopian New Year. Or in the Hebraic sense, we have Rosh Hashanah or Yom Teruah, the, the feast or the festival of the blowing of the trumpets and the fall festival season. This is when Christ was born or Yeshua, Yehoshua, Jesus Christos was born around the September 11th or the Hebraic fall festival season. But January 7th is important because January 7th is when the angel, Lika Malaik Kedus Gabriel, announced to Kedus Gamarium of this great thing. So when we look at Luke's gospel, for example, and we go to um, this, this uh, witness of the angel coming forward and speaking to Zacharias and concerning um, the, the, his wife and John the Baptist, and then the angel goes to Kedistin Gilmati, and it tells us it was a six-month, and we pointed out the rude, uh, was it the rude awakening, uh, Michael Rude, a messianic um, uh, Jewish brother who actually, and others also have done this, even some of our own people, Nebore Id, uh, Eremias, um, of, of the Ethiopia kingdom of God, and others have already told us and shown us from our own roots and others who have done the math and were facing the facts 
of what January 7th really is. It doesn't mean that it's not important because Yeshua wasn't, Jesus wasn't born this day, but this is the announcement. Now when we look nine months forward, we have Ethiopian New Year. So you can see this spiritual, this beautiful spiritual cycle. But now where does it have the practical application in and on our lives? More than saying, oh, Christ, Yeshua, yes, so Jesus Christ was born, and, and, you know, but how are we, are we being born again, or have we been born again? And if we have been born again, are we growing up to him in all things, right? Because it says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So here it says, wherefore the Lord Torah was our schoolmaster to bring us, to bring I and I to Christ to the Moshiach to the anointed. You know, it would have been so much easier if they just did that too. They they chose not to translate this, but they translated mediator. Mediator is not mediator. It has a Greek sound to it too, but here they chose to put Christ. Imagine if it was just to the anointed. To the anointed. It, it would make it that much more easy, and that's probably why they didn't do it. That we, I and I, might be justified or made righteous. We might become sadik on, or we might become sadiks by faith, by that admittance which now has grown and has matured. And therefore, like a tree, it has taken roots. You understand? It has branched. It has flowered. It has fruited. And it has good fruits. This is the goal, brothers and sisters, the rule of the mitmanon's life is gracious, not legal. This is very important. I think I counsel one particular brother on certain matters. And these things we have to reason on. We have to share these reasonings, you understand, and, and teach on these things because many questions come to many of our minds at different times when we're reading and meditating and, and just in our thoughts concerning the way of Christ, concerning the King of Kings, concerning this whole way of life. This is why it's important for us. This is come, let us reason together, regardless of so-called sins or past things. If we are willing to put those past things behind us and acknowledge and confess them, we can move forward. This is what they say even in these programs to help people who have drug addictions and other kind of addictions and, and these psychological, worldly programs. First, you can't help somebody until they, they, they admit that they have a problem, you see. And spiritually, it is very difficult for many of us, if not most of us, to really admit, to humble our... See, when we admit, even in the spirit, even in private meditation or prayer, or even in congregational prayer or meditation with brothers and sisters, when we can admit... This is what now humbles us and brings us more. It magnetizes us to be in the proximity of the Holy Spirit and to be strengthened. The more we hold back that admitting and stay in a state of denial or the Nile, we're going to get eaten up by the crocodiles. And this is exactly what happens. But here it says, but after the faith is come, see what it says, after the faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. In other words, once one becomes mature, one is no longer under Torah. It's almost like the bar mitzvah or the bat mitzvah, coming of that age, that age of maturity or the walda t'izah, as we say, or the waleta t'izah. So once we come of age, we're no longer under the Torah. But we are, we're no longer under the law. But guess what? We are in-laws. We become in-laws. So we are in the law. We're not under the law. You, you, you know what I'm saying? We are now mature. We are now worthy to represent. You know what I'm saying? To represent. So it says we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Now the justified, it says believer here. We'll say the, 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 the righteous, the sadik mitmanan, or the righteous one who admits. So we can admit, but we still have to come to that state of righteousness. So state of righteousness, something we say, righteousness. But it is a process, brothers and sisters. It is a process. So the righteous mitmanon, the tzaddik mitmanon, is a son. 
You see, this is all part of, see how it connects with the, the, the bar mitzvah or, or the, the welded to Izaz, how it connects with that rite of passage, that now at this point, and see, Hawadi Apollos overstood this. Paul, the Apostle Paul, he overstood this. Because he himself was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was a Yehuda. He, was, he, was ed he, he grew up on this. But before his conversion, he was still blind. He, he understood what was here. He, he had great, but he could not see the Moshiach. He could not see Jesus. You know what I'm saying? He could not recognize until he was converted, until he, 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 he made that, until, until he thought differently. When he thought differently, all that he had learned before came into order. And I could testify, this is like a lot of us. A lot of us have a lot of stuff.